I was always like, I, something's wrong with me, like I hate my body. And then uh, I go into it more, it's like more well put than that. <laughs> um, okay, and then as I was writing about it, I think as well that like, and I'm sure that some of you are, are writers or artists in some way, and I think it's a way of thinking, isn't it? Like you can, like it's a way to, on, there's like big tangles in our heads about like all sorts of things and then to try and get it out in whatever way you can put it out there, it's it starts to untangle it and you can see like, oh, that's actually what I'm thinking. Yeah. So I think for me, writing has been so useful and like I'm so lucky to have it because I can get at least a bit of that stuff out and untangled. So, um, of course, without a body, I wouldn't feel anything. And that's when my resentment about my body makes a little bit more sense to me because feeling nothing, now that's a seductive prospect. Not just to be rid of physical feelings, those odd twinges or slowdowns that make you flash forward to the end, but to be rid of all feelings. With no place to store emotions, how could they sneak up on you the way they do? Imagine not having to feel anything, specifically not having to feel anything bad. You see, in my extremely tender little heart, I'm a tiny baby who longs to live in a paradise where she never has to feel sad or angry or even mildly unsure about whether or not she tipped the waitress enough. And when you're a tiny baby determined not to grow up, even good feelings can be difficult. Feelings like love and excitement and joy can hurt because they're too fleeting or too poignant or just too beautiful to bear easily. Lying there in the golden light of late afternoon, I understood why I so often am loath to be in my body. A body makes me feel everything. A body is what makes me human. A body is what makes me alive. And being human and being alive can be difficult. Life flows sweetly at times, but for much of the time, it junks and shudders and hurts. So what am I to do? Rhetorical. <laughs> um. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful and, and really powerful book. And I told you I read it in one go on a plane and not because I was trapped on a plane. I generally did yeah. want to read it. Um, but also, and I, I'm saying all those things because in this book, you talk about how you don't like compliments and you can't handle them and how it was I think you say at one point it was illegal in Ireland to like yourself before 1979 yeah um yeah so, how do, so what do you do people say I like your work I love your podcast I'm I getting like better at it I mean definitely living in America you know if you know America like you they don't understand if you're self-deprecating they just think that's true <laughs> so like they'd be like oh your work is awesome and I'd be like oh no it's just derivative shit <laughs> then they'd be like oh and then goodbye <laughs> Like that's it. That's so I've it. learned from like having meetings and you know, pitching and like getting you know various projects off the ground to say thank you. Yeah, just say yeah. like, th isn't it? You know, like it's yeah. disgusting. But yeah. I've gotten a bit better at it. But um, 